Welcome to Democracy in Africa. In this session, you will be meeting with Mr. John Frondi, leader of the most leading opposition party in Cameroon, SDF. In 1992, Mr. Frondi and the SDF declared themselves the winners of the presidential election that year. Mr. Frondi was kept on a house arrest for 72 days. In this interview, you will listen to Mr. Frondi speak about the political life of Cameroon and Cameroonians. According to our correspondents in Yaoundé, Douala, and Bamenda, there are 20 opposition parties that are contesting for the presidential elections in Cameroon this year. And that election might be taking or should be taking place this weekend. According to them, with the managerial structure put in place and with very little collaboration between the 20 opposition parties, there is very little chance that one of the opposition parties is likely to beat the CPDM. The SDF began in 1990, and when it took up, everyone believed this is the party that was bringing uh, real democracy to Cameroon. What happened after that? The SDF came to bring real democracy in Cameroon, and we have been struggling to bring that real democracy. We've not let down the people, we've not found out anywhere. It is just that the dictators in Cameroon, as we found in other parts of Africa, at the end of every election, they intensify their rigging machinery. And they get the praise singers to come out with letter uh, books of support. If you hear, for instance, in Cameroon today, we have about four books that is written uh, as the people's call, calling Mr. Dia to stand as their candidate and all the like. I've never heard that anywhere in the world. And these people are living in squalor, in Yaoundé where there's no water, there's cholera and all this death. The people are still telling you that they have the people's call from the Kabir to stand as a presidential candidate. They want him to be, uh, they are sending emotions of support. Your children are dying of cholera. Schools are without proper teachers. Teachers are not being paid. And it's only in Cameroon that you have the academic, the academicians, the professors in the university, march in the academic groups. The group there with the that we want you to still be at first. This is not the case. I mean, at a certain level, the professors should stand out of politics. The chiefs should stand out of politics. One should stand out of politics. The civil service should be apolitical. Because if I take over the government tomorrow, I will not bring, I will not serve the civil servants because you are all keeping them to start bringing an LDF uh, civil service. There are certain institutions that you cannot afford to joke with or politicize. But they politicize all this. And you see that during elections, they send out the whole civil service, uh, the police, the army, they're all outside during elections. On the election day, you see they're marching in the uniforms, well clad and, uh, it, it, you know, Intimidating people. This is not it. So the SDF has not failed. And uh, we are still out pointing out all the skills, doing everything to, uh, to, to, to educate Cameroonians. And uh, there are some of you, the elites, who joined the SDF in those days and we thought that we were just going to be at the corner, we just pick it and we find ourselves a job. And when you saw that, found out that we are going to go the extra mile, the food just fell off. Uh, Mr. Mr. Chairman, um, in this question, you touched on several some questions that we probably would like to talk here. One of them is the reading uh, mechanism that uh, African leaders use. You have an election in November, now in the, I'm sorry, in October, and presently, oh, in any election, there should be an election, an electoral commission. But presently, in Cameroon, there's something called and there's also the Minister of Territorial Administration that will be involved in the election as the second part. And the third piece of it would be that the, uh, the, president, of the, the president of the Supreme Court will be the one to uh, announce the result. These are three pieces for three separate bodies that will be in charge of the results of the, the election. What do you think about this? The SDF will be fighting this ever since and we call it the SDF 
from 1990 have been fighting for a body that is an independent electoral commission that will be true, truly and purely independent. But you see, when we asked for this before, they said the Minister of Total Administration and Decentralization should go in and uh, um, manage the elections. We said, no, you cannot send your own minister that you are appointed to manage elections managing with your own uh, civil servants and all the like, who are fighting if we win here, if we make sure that he wins, you know, they will m let us continue with our, uh, our jobs in the civil service. So, we tried the Ministry of Trade Administration, they brought in uh, O'Neill, which was borrowed from Senegal, and by the time they were implementing it in Cameroon, they removed all the elements that made uh, O'Neill credible. And uh, 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 O'Neill again was a laughing stone. Uh, by the time we cried, the Commonwealth came with a letter. And in putting in place a letter, the Commonwealth said they wanted neutral people, totally neutral, completely neutral. But you notice that in the Diaz regime, they went and got the uh, members of the Central Committee, the Bureau of this, the Bureau of that, all the top CPDM people and call them to resign what, after they appointed them as members of the LECA. Of course they resigned. Today, if you call me to resign from the LTF to have something, yes, Frundi as a party can resign, but LTF is in my blood. And wherever I see me, say LTF, you see my hand of power. Despite the fact that, you know, I've worn the juju mask on my face to say, look, I'm not in the LTF again. Okay. That's precisely what is happening. And if we're fighting for uh, this neutral body which the Commonwealth came in with their own set laws and were very frank and straight, uh, they streamlined that, and Mr. B is not taking it. It is because when the uh, Minister of Transition Administration was handling elections, uh, the Minister will start giving you trends. Oh, from this area we are Winning, the CPDM is winning with this number of votes, with this, number, uh, with this percentage, 90%. Winning from this area with 80%. Winning from this area with 70 In fact, the number went down to 70 And this was sending a message to the uh, DOs and the SDOs to say, please, this is what we want from you. And you come see a typical example of what happened that they had the results in their cobalt before going, to, going in for elections where they told, told us that, look, LDF was winning by 14 seats. Meanwhile, the CPDM had won in Bamenda Center, the CPDM had won in Santa, the CPDM had won in Kumba, the CPDM had won in uh, Bafu here. Whereas, we were still contesting and they were counting those results. We stood firm and got our boys to, uh, to, to make sure that they manned the areas so that they shouldn't bring in uh, stop ballot boxes. When we finally won in Bafu we had 14. We fought, fought, finally won in Santa, we had 14. We won Kumba, we had 14. We won Bamenda Center here, we had 14. So how do you go into elections where no matter where you go, what you do, you have 14 seats? And in the elections of 92, Minister, the, 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 the present uh, the, the judge of the Supreme Court, Ivanda Mwele, is the one who pronounced the results then. And in his pronunciation, he said, look, he had taken note of the illegalities, the irregularities, but his hands were tied and was called to pro proclaim the incumbent winner. And of course, he proclaimed the incumbent winner. And the incumbent held me under house arrest. The international community saw. They killed people here. And they've killed people in Cameroon more than they've killed in these other places that are fighting for the, 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 the incumbent to go. So when you see that the international community is having double talk, looking at people with one eye smiling, the other one crying, I think that the international community should have one face looking at people and taking note that the world is a global village, that a problem that affects people in Cameroon affects people in Ivory Coast, affects people in America. Because in the final analysis, the Ivorians will be running to America. Cameroonians will be running to America. And when they run there, because they cannot come back home, they congest America. A French official, diplomat, once told me, he said, oh, Mr. Chairman, you support the French, we'll come take care of you here. 
And uh, if there are problems, you come to France, we'll take care of you. You can buy a house in France and uh, they take, uh, they take charge of you. And I told him, I said, look, when you have people running away from Cameroon, running away from Ivory Coast, from Niger, from uh, Senegal, from Mali, from uh, Tunisia and all these areas, coming to France because the regimes in their countries are not friendly, especially to the youth. And all these youths can pack in France. You will not have accommodation for them. You will have to feed extra miles. Of which, if we had looked onto election, yeah. So when you look at all, I say, okay, can you put some? Uh, can you take ten envelopes and throw in this ballot box? Let them be together. Let's see. Okay. Then they come back again to <coughs> counting. We said, okay, you've ticked from the uh, register before you the number of people that have voted. Let us count the number of uh, ballot papers to see whether they tally with the number of people you think. Oh, no, no, the people have voted, you just count. You throw the thing down, count. Oh, uh, uh, the SC, the citizens winning here by this. Oh, the SDF has the number of votes. This is good. Then, you come back to, you know, so when you have all these things happening, you do not have a good electoral system. Then the other thing I was not talking about. First, you have to vote with your identity card. At one stage, they say, no, people should vote with their identity card. Just go, as long as you have a, your ballot paper, your voter's card, you can go and vote. And they went and uh, fabricated uh, voter's cards for people that never existed and gave this to children to come vote. You come with a, a genuine vote, uh, a voter's card, they will let you to go and vote. You don't have your identity card for them to cross-check whether the name on the voter's card corresponded with the name on your identity card. They allowed you, you went voted. It sounds like now, voting in practice, sending somebody to vote on your Right. Behalf. So when I got up the, the Santa, I called one of the boys, please, can I see your voter's card? He gave me the voter's card, genuine. What is your name? For instance, I don't know what he told me again, but let's assume that he told me that, okay, I am John. Yes, I see the first name, John. What's your father's name? He didn't know his father's name. He didn't know where he was born. He didn't know the mother's name. He didn't know when he was born. So you see that he's managed to cram one name to put because he was voting. And when I started addressing him there, as he was trying to run, I grabbed him on the belt and removed 84,000, was it 84, 86,000 bankers' notes that they'd given this boy with plastic slippers to buy votes. So when you have this in Cameroon, and this happens in Cameroon, it makes Cameroon, the governance, incredible. And investors cannot come invest in this country because the electoral system, the human rights abuses are enormous. Uh, Mr. Chairman, let's, let's go back to the Electoral Commission. Uh, let's see, with this experience of over, over what, 17, 18 years now, what is the FDA and the opposition doing now to counter Anything that comes up in October. When they came up with the LECAM, the LGF studied the law through our parliamentarians, and we pointed out all the flaws that the CPDM government was doing, diverting from the recommendations of the Commonwealth. Now, I cannot go into, I'm glad you've been in the country for a couple of days. You notice that they are registering people at market squares, at churches, at cry dice, off licenses. Anywhere they meet people, three, four of you, they register you there. Where shall these people vote? Where is a polling station? They might meet people who are at the bus stop trying to take a vehicle, go somewhere. They get them registered there. Meanwhile, there are people from Douala coming up. And again, the mess they've called in the electoral register is that uh, they said, oh, uh, the Minister of Territorial Administration gave them uh, an electoral register of about 5 million people. Lies, false. There's been no electoral register in this country with the administration that's gone up to 2.5 million. No. The year that the SDF and the opposition boycotted elections, Mr. Bia 
declared himself winner with less than 15% of Cameroonians turning out to vote. And uh, in Santa, as I told you, they had a false register of 5,000 voters. So when you tell me that you've acquired an electoral register from the Minister of Electoral Administration and Decentralization of uh, uh, 5 million people, with 5 million people, that you registered more than where? Because when we now uh, discovered the rigging machinery that, that, that had been put in place in Santa and were fighting it, most of the polling stations were here, they had 7, 000, I mean, uh, 700 people, 500 people, 400 and something people in, uh, at the polling stations. Like the potato house in Santa, you have a polling station A, B, C, D, E, F. In this side, the same thing the other way, with about five, 500 votes here, 700 uh, registered people there. And when we manned these places, all those polling stations had not, 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 because they couldn't rig there. Now, when you ask what are we doing? The SDF has drawn, this, has drawn the attention of the Cameroonian people to this. And when they even went out for registration, Cameroonians on their own resisted. It's not that the open, uh, Furundi and the SDF came out to tell Cameroonians not to register. They resisted. They said the electoral system in the country has not been good. It's been fraudulent, false. They want to have something that can guarantee the people. But. There was no guarantee in this. So when the people resisted, the SDM now studied what was going wrong or what is wrong. And I toured the country. And when I toured the country, they saw the turnout. So I think the system panicked and said, OK, Mr. B had to call for an extraordinary session of the parliament where he tabled the bills on the letter. And during this, they debated and said, we are going to increase the letter by six places. So the LGF said, well, the other parties had accepted the letter in its present form. But the LGF told the BS government that without a change in the LGF bill, there will be no elections in this country. Because if small countries like Benin, a country like Ghana, a country like um, uh, Guinea, and these other small countries around, They've had independent electoral commissions with biometric registrations. Cameroon today is still registering people on sheets of paper, receipts. There are some people in this town with 10 receipts that they've registered. I went up north before I talked. These Muslims brought 10, 15, 20 receipts. Say, Chairman, look, we've registered. Me, one. I have 20. Now they tell you that they, they, they have a. Uh, that they have um, uh, six, 6 million people registered now. Where did they get the 6 million from? The SDF believes that until we come out with a registration system that will be biometric, so that when you register me, you have my picture, you have my fingerprint, and uh, the receipt I have has my picture with a number, which tallies with the number on the master uh, sheet that will come out. So that when I go with my picture, I vote. No other person can come and still vote. But now with the haphazard system of registration, we told them that Elekam was CPDM. They said no. After some time, they, they got all the CPDM ministers, directors, uh, the secretary generals, everybody who mattered in government. They are out in the field now registering. Registration is a civic duty of the people. You should guarantee them to go and register without you forcing them. Now they are contributing money. So we have to pay for people to go register. We have to buy the identity cards for them to go register. And they go out of the field, cause corruption and all that. As they also cause the corruption during uh, voting. When you call a, a school child in secondary school, you give that child a thousand. He goes, votes, brings you the SDF card. You give him another thousand, he votes. You've trained that mind with corruption. And Cameroon will continue to be a corrupt country for a long time. And as long as we are corrupt, we are from the states. No American company will come, want to come and invest in a corrupt country. I think people of the world are out to do business and do business with a profit and not do business with corrupt people where their money is with them.
Mr. Chairman, you just mentioned Ghana in, in your last, uh, in our last uh, conversation, the question that was given. Let's see, Ghana in the last, in this last election in 2008, <coughs> uh, expressed one of the most democratic elections in, in Africa. First, the winner, no, the loser called the winner to congratulate the winner for winning. And this is a rare. Indeed, it was the first time that happened. This is real democracy that is practiced in the United States. How soon do you think such civility comes into Cameroon, Cameroon, uh, Cameroon democracy? You, st you start by talking the civility that will come in Cameroon democracy when somebody wins. The conditions to make you win have not been, been put in place. So how do you think I'll start thinking of that if somebody wins, you can call to congratulate? Have you been given the platform, the... the, 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 the the, the, the playing field level for you to first win before or lose in a, a, a fair way before uh, calling somebody to congratulate? I think you asked that question from Mr. Dia. Uh, when? Because he has the yam and the knife. And he can tell you that I'm doing this, this is what I'm doing. For instance, since it, it, we, 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 we would arm twist them to uh, increase a lecum by six positions, which the SDF said. All the other political parties have accepted a letter in its present form. So the, pre the six people that, they are, they, they, that they, 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 he's coming to say he was going, he's going to increase a letter by are for the SDF. Okay, Parliament rose. It's almost a month now. He's not made any statement about that. And time is going. The clock is ticking. <coughs> and we still stand by our, our word that if Elekam would be in his present form, there will be no elections in this country. Uh, is Mr. Chairman for real that there will be no elections in this country if... I, the Chairman is echoing the feelings and the voices of the people. As when we started, we talked of uh, 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 motions of support, coming with motions of support. I'm echoing the voices of the people. When in 2008, Cameroonian youths rose here and they were climbing, with, they were about to climb into a treaty to tell Mr. Bia to go. I mean, it's not fundy that called for that. And of recent, when I was on the field, they wanted to start something like that in Douala to say that they should call on Mr. Bia to go. And there are some of you in America who come up with very good uh, manipulations, go tell Fundy to go to Douala, demonstrate there for Bia to go. Frundi and the SDF are for transparent elections because we believe in democracy. We believe in democracy. Mr. Bia has given a concoction of disaster in this country where he's tribalized nearly all the structures of government. And when a thing like that comes into Cameroon, take note <coughs> that Cameroon will shatter like you throw an egg off the seventh, uh, a raw egg off the seventh, uh, seventh floor of a building. When the force here will all shatter, you will never have anything that you can even take to make my Mr. Chairman, let's, let's move to agriculture. Uh, sometimes in the late 70s and perhaps the very early 80s, Cameroon uh, was one of the best agricultural countries in Africa. And Cameroon was a hub, indeed, the breadbasket bread to uh, the surrounding countries, say Gabon, Ethiopia, Chad. Central African Republic. Food from Cameroon went as far as Sudan. But shortly after that, when you travel to this country or when you hear people in this country talk to you, they tell you, we are starving. What happened? What happened to the agriculture? What's happened to the Cambodian agricultural setup is that the government has no policy on agriculture. The BS government has no policy on agriculture. Let's look at, I'm happy you started in the early 70s or let 60s. Us. Let, us, let us start in the 60s. In the West Cameroon system, the government of West Cameroon had cooperative stores where all the farmers sold their food crops in the cooperative stores. The government now looked for markets. But today, the suffering farmers are left at the, uh, the courses of the um, buy and sellers, where they have to go meet the people directly. Let us go, go back to coffee, cocoa, 
in the days of West Cameroon. If the West Cameroon government sold coffee for 500 francs per kilo in the world market, they paid the farmers 300 francs per kilo. The 200 francs that was left, they used 100 francs for developmental projects and scholarship awards. Then 100 francs was saved for the farmers for the rainy day. At unification, this money, when they saw this money in the accounts of the West Cameroon Marketing Board, they said, all oh, these people don't know how to chop money. They took everything. They never even paid the farmers, they never paid the workers of the marketing boards, and most of them died without receiving their remuneration and built houses at the ports in the world. And when the West Cameroon government was paying farmers 300 francs per kilo of cocoa and saving two, the East Cameroon government was paying the farmers about 320, 350 francs per kilo and chopping the 150. So there was nothing left for the people. And when this came up, they were chopping this until the farmers found out that they had them nothing. They got angry and abandoned their coffee farms, cocoa farms. Now the prices of cocoa, especially uh, uh, Arabica coffee from the northwest here, the prices of Arabica coffee, etc., are shooting up, cocoa shooting up. They want now the money, the, the, the farmers to bring cocoa, but they don't, the farmers are angry. The farmers could not buy the pesticides for their cocoa, to spray their cocoa pots. They couldn't do that, right? So, when they could not do that, they abandoned the farms. I happened to have traveled from Kumba through Tombel, from Tombel through Nyasoso, Bangem, busing out at uh, Sancho. In the bushes of uh, Bangem, Nyasoso, I saw some of the healthiest cocoa yams I ever saw in my life. And on market days, these poor farmers, you have their reddish feet because as they are going through the bushes, this thorny grass keeps hurting them. And when the wounds heal, they leave you the red marks. You see them sitting, hungry looking, dilapidated by the heaps of cocoa, plantains, and all the like. The buy and sell them that are supposed to buy take to Gabon. Come and tell you, okay, we'll pay you this for this heap now. We'll pay you this for that heap of plantains. The farmer said, no. Last week we bought for this, pay us that. They said, no, we don't buy like that. They drive off. Come after three days, the cocoyams are getting rotten, the plantains are getting ripened. They will not give you the price they gave before. They now go down. So you see that the farmers are working for nothing. And that's why the, the, the prices in the markets have fallen. And uh, then the so-called fertilizers, a bag of fertilizer is about 27,000 francs. How many Cameroonian farmers can afford fertilizer? And there are other subsidies, the subsidies that, they, uh, that they could subsidize fertilizer for. But Cameroon government is not taking yet. We have a research department which, I mean, they are claiming, putting so much money into research where they cannot help the farmers. You go in, today in Bamenda, when somebody insults you that you look like a barefoot seed corn, it's because the cup of corn now has come so small. Because these farmers are planting the same seed corn over and over and over, so it starts reducing until you have a cup of corn where you might have four, five grains. Is that corn? But yet we have the Department of Research. And I'm told that uh, Professor Yukta Kem was, uh, in those days, was the best in the whole of West Africa on grains. They took him, made him a minister stopped him from doing his research to, to come up with a seed that people can plant. We had the agricultural show not long ago. These were farmers that out of their own uh, efforts with cutlasses and hoes managed to bring things out for agriculture. But the government takes pride. Oh, we've organized an agri show. But they did not come up with a program to tell Cameroonians we've we have this number of tons of uh, seed corn, we have this number of tons of this, of that, of that, improved seeds for people to plant. And for them to further research and tell you that, okay, in the absence of cocoa today, we can plant soya beans. In the absence of this, we can plant that. And 
agricultural produce are perishable. If potatoes are harvested from Santa, you cannot tell those potatoes, wait, let me go look for the market. You have to look for the market as the people are harvesting, they are buying, taking straight to the consumer. The same thing with the lettuce, with the leeks, with the shallots, with all these very nice vegetables that are harvested around Santa. Yeah, Mr. Chairman, let's get into the economy now. Um, the United States has one of the biggest, most sophisticated economies in the world. Uh, and the private sector is what mines or pushes up the United States economy. The now analysis that Mr. Beer is not... Now, the private sector in the United States is, is developed by government. And so 20% of the United States economy is government, what they call here, or people who work here call civil service. The analysis now that Mr. Beer is not developing the private sector in Cameroon with the fear that if he does that, there would be a big middle class, a big independent middle class that would not vote for him and this will make him get out of office. Is that correct? Well, but you see, it's unfortunate that he thinks that way. He's supposed to develop that and tell them that is what I'm able to do. Let me go back to West Cameroon. You were a young journalist then. And uh, in Boya, civil servants were able to plant tomatoes by their houses. You saw baskets and baskets of tomatoes, uh, tomatoes planted by civil servants. But today, they cannot do that. And if the uh, economy is encouraged by government, Cameroon instead kills that initiative. Let's say a young businessman from outside, you from the United States, you come here, you bring American businessmen that they are coming to invest in Cameroon. Well, I think the court stipulates that if a foreign investor is coming in, he comes, he, he brings in 40% uh, while Cameroon uh, puts in 60%. The 60% that the Cameroon government will want to put in is bringing your sister, your son, your daughter, your nephew on high exorbitant salaries with quite a number of cars and uh, before you realize all the money that the man brings in, you say you bring labor, uh, man labor and all this. They will chop all the money and the man will be sleeping in the hotel the following day he runs out without a business in front. Well, even when young Cameroonians come out, come in to do business, instead of the government giving them a monotero, helping them to import their machines and giving them industrial free zone areas where they could establish. All these things are not being done in Cameroon. And when you start up a small business, oh, taxes. We know you invested in tax. Tax. And they just tax you out of business. I remember in my early days in business, I went to court and saw people who started business out of nothing, recruited young local boys around to sell in the shop. The man is going to do all the buying things, bring the sell. After some time, the boy steals and is dismissed from the shop. He takes you to the labor office. They tell you, you have to pay this boy 1.5 million, 2 million, 3 million. That man never started the business with 3 million. So, is this a government that encourages development, helps initiate it? Mr. Chairman, let's get into road network. Uh, one of the most deadly roads in this country is the Douala Yaoni Road. That almost every day we hear several different Cameroonians have died. Um, there have been expectations that that road should have been two way on one side. That has not happened. Um, there is also expectation that there should be a real rail track running from Douala and connecting the, ex the extreme north. Why can such grand projects not run up in Cameroon? Again, that's a, qu a question you should ask Mr. Beer. Since he took over, what has he done? Privatized the railway, privatized the airway, privatized the shipping line, privatized. And in those days when we stood at our campaigns, we said they are auctioning Cameroon, and before long, Cameroon is going one, two, three, they're ringing the bell. People laughed at us and thought we were joking. Today has come to pass. When they privatized the railway lines, we thought that they were privatizing for improvement. 
when they privatize uh, 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 the airlines, we thought they were going to go for improvements. But the civil servants would fly in the planes with their children first class and they would not pay. The head of state would take the plane and uh, taxi it at a foreign airport, international airport, for three weeks. Sir, for your plane to occupy that spot at an international airport for three weeks is money that you can pay civil servants. But it's there hanging. And that's a Cameroon Airlines plane. Instead of that plane being used to carry passengers, Douala, Paris, Douala, they have to hire a plane. Hire a plane to be carrying these passengers. And that went on until everything was done. So it is a government that has no will to succeed. Let us uh, put things the way they are so that Cameroonians. When you shake a 500 francs note before a person, the person is, uh, you know, when, I don't know, those of you, some of us who grew in the village, hunted with dogs, and when you are going to uh, hunt with your dog, you start it for it to run fast. So when you come back home, the grain that you throw up, the dog jumps and catches right, right in the air, because that dog is hungry. They've made Cameroonians go hungry. There are just one grain they throw up in the air. You see people come jam their heads to catch that grain, fall back, and in the end, sometimes they even destroy the grain without eating. So it's a system that has come up, tell out things the way they've done, to ever put you at the begging end. So that when you come, I give you a pencil. Go we'll come, I'll give you another one. You have to come back. Let's go into law, into law enforcement. Um, currently, now, not I didn't quite answer the question on the, the roads. Okay. Uh, when they built the Douala Yaoundé road, in those days, it's there on records in the newspapers. We argued that that was a death trap. I remember two ambassadors scolded me and told me that, look, listen, they're giving you a thing instead of people being happy with. I said, Mr. Ambassador, this is a death trap. The machines in the world today that can bulldoze through rocks, through mountains, and build good roads. And they should build these good roads and put toll gates Cameroonians will pay for. But they want that thing. And as you rightly say, people are dying on that road, Wala Yaoundé, in the hundreds. Of recent, uh, an idea was being mooted that uh, they don't want. Uh, night travels again. Hotels in Yaoundé are very expensive. Somebody living in the northwest or the southwest or any of these places, to travel overnight, in the morning you are in Yaoundé, you go chase your documents. When Mr. Bia took over, he said, look, you shall never chase documents again. Today, so many people are dying in Yaoundé, on the way to Yaoundé, uh, in chase of their documents. Now, and uh, instead of putting your blame on the bad roads, you want to blame people that don't travel at night. And then, there are potholes. There are potholes where the drivers are swinging from left to right, dodging potholes and all the like. And some of the potholes that are new, they don't know. As soon as they jump inside the tire fires, the vehicle somersaults. And then, uh, the gendarmes are on the highways, checking vehicles. They are not checking the vehicles with bad lights. Sometimes they have to check vehicles with immatriculation numbers from certain areas. So, instead of doing the proper job, they are not, being, they, 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 they are not doing it. So, this speaks for itself why there are so many people dying. Now, um, Law enforcement, Mr. I'm coming, sir. Excuse me. I went to Njamina. The people of Njamina are digging a road through Nigeria onto Benin to import their things now through Benin onto Jamina. Whereas it's shorter and cheaper through Cameroon. But the way, if you're talking of law enforcement, the way the, 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 the of officials from customs to uh, the gendarmes on the highways to the police have treated the people of Jamina, they say, no, Nigeria is corrupt, but we can deal with Nigeria better than Cameroon. And that is Cameroon. It's 
a God-given golden area where we could have had goods going to Central African Republic, goods going to Chad, goods going to uh, even northern parts of Nigeria, the eastern part, uh, the western part of the Congo here. But these things cannot go because Cameroon has no master plan to make use first of the position of Cameroon, to make use of the agricultural resources of Cameroon, so that we can truly be that bread basket. Um, then the law enforcement. Okay. Um, currently, not only recently, currently, almost every Cameroonian is complaining that he or she is being haunted by lawlessness. People hardly travel when it is evil or dark. They are either attacked by armed robbers, some are even killed. So, what caused all this breakdown? Ask Mr. B. He has the gendarmes, he has the police, he has the army, he has the air force, he has the navy, he has the uh, bill, he has the, uh, the secret uh, police, he has, I mean, I think Cameroon is the only country with about 10 arms of the police, of the members of the armed forces, who are supposed to check. Of recent, we are told that they attacked Eco Bank in Iwala. Then, the prior, the, the the Minister of Communication and the Governor of Douala said, oh, they killed about, uh, how many of them on the high seas? Under normal circumstances, when you shoot a person, he dies, he floats. They should carry them and we identify them. That was never done. They stole about 200 million. Nothing was said about the money. Yet, when they started this thing, they couldn't have operated from about 11 p.m. till about 3 a.m in uh, a highly sensitive area with all the building uh, uh, rapid and all the like. There, they could not until they got onto the high seas. Who knows whether they got some poor uh, business people going to Nigeria and they shot them and said they should uh, they killed the uh, arm robbers that uh, arm robbed the banks. I mean, it is unfortunate. But again, of recent, I still sound corrected, but I'm very convinced that I heard over the radio that some of the people who've been arrested for the robbery are members of the forces. So when, the, when you now have to arm rob the people you are supposed to protect, how safe are we? So that speaks for itself why Cameroonians are now, Mr. Chairman, this question. Who will win the October election if it holds? If the if the October election holds, because in our discussion here you said, well, if there's no electoral commission, an independent electoral commission in uh, the SDF and the opposition are not allowing the election to hold. If the election holds, whom do you think will win that election? Cameroonians will win. I'm not the incumbent because the incumbent is frightened of losing. That's why they send the whole CVDM court to go out to do registration. They are buying new cars for the, the, the governor, 